in Tucson, there is a rock named Lynx Crag. And standing on top of this rock is a hut. This is the home of a witch, who is aptly named the Witch of Lynx Crag. You might have come across her or her name as she is featured prominently in the quest A Night's Tales, as well as being mentioned by some Toussaint Trois and in the journal of a man who hanged himself. I'll first go over her past and the quest she appears in, and after that there will be some speculation about her identity and involvement in certain events. This witch, whose real name we do not know, has lived on this rock for a long time. Her presence was used by parents to scare their children, for they claimed that the witch would steal and eat them. Were this a witch lived up Link's Crag, one who'd steal children, grind their bones to flour and bake gingerbread biscuits out of it? From what we can find about this witch, it seems clear that she really doesn't like it when other people are in love. For both in A Knight's Tales and The Suffering of Young Francois, she seems out to destroy relationships and love. There can be several reasons why she seems to hate people and love so much. Either she had her heart broken or never found love to begin with. Whatever the cause of her dislike to love was, we don't know for sure. Over the years, she has gotten a reputation of having a heart of ice and that one should humble himself when visiting her in hopes to convince her, for it was said to be the only thing she accepted. She became a figure of legends in Toussaint, something that would only become more and more the case over time. As what she is most known for it was the legend or fairy tale of Daphne and Gareth. A long time ago, a man named Gareth had to complete seven tasks to be allowed to marry Daphne, the woman he loved. He had completed all of his tasks, save for one. There was a drought that plagued the land, and he was tasked with convincing the witch of Lynx Crag to lift it. Everyone, including Daphne, told Gareth that he should be humble when talking to her, for only an act of true humility could break her icy heart. The legend states that no one knew what happened on Lynx Crag. Gareth never returned, and his beloved Daphne was waiting for him turned into a tree so that she may live to see the return of her beloved knight. This was said to be a doing of the power of love and longing. However, as this is a fairy tale version of the events, certain things are always exaggerated and not completely true to the real events. We do, however, get the account of the events from the witch. The lady's knight, you ever make it here? Sagaras. Yes, he came to sway me, but had a quick change of heart. To be precise, it came after the first night we spent together. He stayed a fair while, then his conscience got the better of him, and he resolved to return to his beloved. Might have resolved to, but never made it. A tragic fate befell him along the way. You have anything to do with this turn of fate? Of course. Was I to let another woman have a man who belonged to me? <laughs> I could not abide it. It seemed like the witch had fallen in love with Gareth. And she couldn't stand it that he left her to go back to Daphne. Therefore, she decided it would be better to have him get an accident on the way back. So that if she couldn't have him, no one could. This could also explain why she misguided Francois with the love potion and why she seemed to hate those that were in love or that were longing for love. With the theme resonating that she didn't want others to have what she couldn't have. As you may have noticed, the rock she lives on is home to several cats, large cats, who all seem to be fairly peaceful towards you. These three cats most likely were not born as cats, as in the hut of the witch, we can find books talking about how to transform humans into creatures. As well as three items on the pentagram, 
that have nothing to do with any quest. Three items on the pentagram, three felines. This also brings up another point. As the three people were changed into cats, each of them having a personal item on their wall, this could also very well mean that the witch also cursed Daphne to become a tree as her kerchief was on the wall. If an item is given to someone to bring back to you, you might still count that as something powerful enough to the person who gave it to be able to curse that person. This witch seems like someone who will do something like have a person be stuck waiting for their beloved for years, decades, maybe even a century. It could very well be the case that she was responsible, but that she didn't mention it to Geralt, for that he would definitely not have approved of it and maybe even decided to kill her after all instead of sparing her. In the game, there is no option to kill the witch. No matter what you choose, you can fight her, but you can't kill her. She will send you on your way to lift the curse, and in none of the three options will you see or hear from her ever again. In one of the endings, she will ask Geralt for a lock of his hair, so that she can hide from him so they will never meet again. Giving a magic user your hair is never the smart thing to do, especially not to a witch that has proven to be not the kindest to others. No matter the choice, Daphne is dead and can't be brought back to life as she can't regain her lost years, indicating that she has been in the tree for more than a human lifespan. But your choices still do decide the fate of the lumberjack who found the tree in the first place. I've mentioned another event with lovers that this witch was involved in, so let's talk about that for a short bit. A letter can be found in which a man who is desperately in love visited the witch from Lynx Crag to buy a magic elixir that was supposed to be a love potion. The witch told him that if he convinces his love to drink it, he will be able to forget his problems soon. This turned out worse than the man expected. First of all, he was supposed to convince her to drink it, instead he hit the elixir with wine. Second of all, the woman he loved didn't love him and told him that she would only become his wife when the gems he brought to her would turn into grapevines. The last problem was exactly what she said. As a strange storm came, the next morning she and her true beloved were killed by a spriggan, who had grown from the gems most likely. When Francois realized what had happened, he hung himself, ending all of his problems as he wanted to be with his beloved in death, as a way to atone for his sins. As you might have noticed, the witch of Lynx Crag isn't the nicest witch around. But how bad is she? At the start of this video, I mentioned the rumor of her stealing children and grinding their bones. In her hut, we can find a bowl with bone dust, as well as a skull in one of her chests. Could this be an indication of her using human bones? Or is the bone dust coming from the bones of the rabbit laying on the table next to the bone dust? The second option seems a bit more plausible. Among the other items that can be found in our hut, there's also a book that speaks of a way to accurately predict the future, as well as a book that is a Lovecraft reference that was forbidden by the Conclave of Mages. The Witch of Lynx Crag had been the source of several theories people have had. I'll go into two of them for a bit. The first one is her link to Gaunter Odim. Some have speculated that when Shakelock mentions in Heart of Stone that Olgird met a wandering witch, that it might have been this witch. Indeed. Their luck turned yet darker when a wandering witch mentioned a solution. A man who would grant any wish. His name, Master Mirror. But the main problem I have with this is that the wandering part. As the witch seems very stationary, having lived in that hut for what I guess might have been more than a century at least. But it is the broken mirror in the house for most people that symbolizes Gaunter Odim. CDPR does seem to like to hide Odim in references and easter eggs, but it has to be kept in mind that the broken mirror is an asset in the game. 
which means that sometimes it's just decoration without any meaning. But of course, I could be wrong and it could actually mean something. The second theory has to do with the fact that some people think she is the witch Abigail from The Witcher 1. This mainly has to do with how she looked and the fact that she's a witch. Also, a large part of why people think that this witch might be Abigail is because of a book written by an Abigail talking about panthers in Blood and Wine. Yet the thing is that this book about panthers in the end says that she was scared of a panther and ran away, kind of losing the panther connection that the witch from Lynx Crag had with her panthers. The problems are, however, that Abigail can die in The Witcher 1, and just like with the Odim one, she isn't known for being anywhere else other than her rock in Toussaint. But of course, as a witch, she might just be able to travel wherever she wants, while her panthers guard her home. I also want to mention that I've seen some people speculate that she might have something to do with the crones from Crookback Bog as well. But this, for a large part, seems to be driven by the way she seems to teleport and move, with the cloud of crows. But this may just be a very common way for witches to move around. Whatever it is, something is going on with this witch. And she doesn't seem up to much good. So, what do you think of the witch of Lynx Crag? Is she connected to Gaunter or Dim? What does she maybe want to use Geralt's hair for besides never seeing him? Is she even telling the truth about the events that happened? Till next video. Bye.